Good evening, everybody, and welcome to Time with the SL. Let us pray. Jesus, the Son of God, the Word by whom all things are made. As we are going into your Word, we pray that these words of life recreate our inner man, that by the end of this session, we shall be made alive unto righteousness, the righteousness of God. In Jesus' name, Amen. Good evening, everyone, once again. This evening, God is asking us, what do you want me to do? What do you want me to do? So what do you want God to do? What is it you want God to do? What is the prayer of your heart? What is it you're asking from God? What do you need God to do in your life? Is there something you have been praying about? Something that you are going through? Something you are worried about going through? What is it? exactly that you want God to do are you worried about the future or is there a real problem is it that there's something actually going on in your life that you want God to deal with something today what circumstance are you in what is the issue what is that issue that you need to get over what is that challenge that you need to overcome God is asking us today, what is, what is it that you need this victory over? All you're doing, why, why are you doing what you're doing? What is it that you want God to do? And perhaps you're thinking of one or all of these questions that I've just asked. Or even all the questions. Maybe you've been mulling over things for a while. Maybe you need God to do something simple. Maybe you need God to work a miracle. What is it? Provision, you need God to provide something. Or perhaps it's healing you need. What is it you want God to do? The thing is, whatever it is you are looking for, <laughs> God is able. And God is the answer in every circumstance. And we can trust him in every situation. We can trust his mercy, we can trust his love. We can trust his grace. We can trust, actually trust in God. And the text I want us to focus on this evening is Proverbs 3, 5 to 6. You know, it's such a, it's a short, it's a short scripture. And it's very commonly used. Trust in the Lord with all your heart, lean not on your own understanding, in all your ways submit to him and he will make your path straight. And the NLT version says, trust in the Lord with all your heart. Do not depend on your own understanding. Seek his will in all you do, and he will show you which path to take. The first scripture I read came from the NIV. So what is it that you want God to do? What do you need to trust God to do? Remember, we are still in our series, Trusting God. Beloved, this evening we can thank God for who he is. And because of who he is, we can trust him to keep his promises. I can't, I can't, I can't vouch for myself because I, there are things that I want to do that I end up not doing. But I can vouch for God that everything he has said he will do, he has done. And the Bible is full of promises. The Bible is full of promises. You know, unless you're one of those people who uses their Bible as a pillow or a neck brace, you know, if you open the Bible, it's just full of so many promises. And some promises were for specific people at specific times. Other promises apply to everyone who places their trust in the Lord. So maybe this evening, whatever your situation, whatever your circumstance, whatever your challenge, you need to take hold of this promise and trust God to lead you and guide you and bless you. I will share a truth with you. God is worthy of your trust. His love, his mercy, his grace, his power, every single attribute you can think of that are part of his nature means that when God promises to work in you and through you, he will accomplish his plan and purpose in your life. So this evening I ask you again, what do you need to trust God to do? What is it you need to trust God to do? 
You see, when we place our trust in him, we are trusting in the only one who already knows what is going to happen. I think, I said this yesterday, you know, sometimes you'll say there is an art to something. But then, because there's a certain formula that is used for God and the things of God, maybe we should say there is a science. What God has ordained is going to happen. It's going to happen. And if you are able to see your circumstances and your situation as God sees them, I'm convinced we would react and will behave differently when we face trials and tribulations. You understand this this evening that God is eternal. So our eternal God sees the big picture. He sees the beginning, he sees the middle and the end. Do you understand? So your life, imagine your life is in a, is in a glass bowl. God can see everything about your life. Do you understand? But we are not, because we are here on the other side of eternity, our focus is temporal. Are you getting me? Our focus is temporal. We can only look back at the past. You can remember the things that happened yesterday. You can focus on what has happened today, but none of us can see tomorrow. Do you understand? So because all you are looking at is what happened yesterday, what happened today, you then start to spend time, much time, worrying about tomorrow. Meanwhile, God has seen everything and he is saying to you, my child, it is okay. I got this. It's in my hands. Do you understand? So when we go to bed at night, our minds will whirl with fears. What is tomorrow going to bring? What is going to happen tomorrow? What's going to happen tomorrow? Look at simple things. We can spend the night worrying about all sorts of rubbish. Did I lock the front door? Did I unplug the kettle? Ah, did I set the alarm clock? I need to get up. I have the declarations at 5 o'clock in the morning. Let me make sure I set my alarm for 4 a.m. I have to get up. I have to prepare. Will my alarm clock go off in the morning? That's another thing we worry about. What will I have for breakfast? Did I remember to buy milk? Did I give the cat the last of the milk? Did I put the cat out? Do I have a cat? Should I buy a cat? So I can put one out at night. We worry about so many things, don't we? Don't we worry about all manner of things? All manner of things. What if the generator goes off at night? What if this? What if that? What did Jesus tell us? Matthew 6, 34. He said, don't worry about tomorrow. For tomorrow will bring its own worries. Today's trouble is enough for today. You know, when I got that revelation, I don't worry about anything. I don't. Because my worry is not going to bring the solution. When you worry, are you going to get a solution from your worrying? No. It will just make you start fretting. Maybe you even now make mistakes. I know it is easier said than done. It is easier said than done. It's harder to really live it. It's harder. But let me tell you this. That is where the word of God comes into play. 1 Peter 5, 7. Give all your worries and cares to God, for he cares about you. Give everything to God. Give everything to God. A lot of the time, the reason why we don't want to give to God is because we believe that we can do things on our own. That is pride. If we could only trust how much that God really cares for us, how much happier we will be. If you understand, you cannot see for, your, for, for, for yourself. You, can, you, can you give one of your children because of another person. God gave his son for us. While we were yet sinners, he knew we were still going to mess up. We were still going to do all the foolish things we still do. And yet, before we were born, before we even started sinning, Jesus Christ died for us. And we still sin. If our expectations are aligned with what God has already promised, perhaps we will find it easier to really trust the Lord with all our heart. And depend less on our abilities. 
I don't know what it is. Maybe your biggest challenge is trusting God concerning your expectations. Maybe that's what it is. You see, you need to see your circumstances as God sees your circumstances. You have to see your circumstances as God sees them. You need to learn to look through God's eyes. Look at things from God's perspective. Stop looking at things from your perspective. You need to trust God to be God. You have to trust him to be God. Despite the circumstances, despite what you cannot see, those things that seem impossible, despite what you know, despite what you feel, despite what you think, despite what you want to run away from, despite everything, you need to trust God to be God. Let God be God. Did he ask you to help him carry the world? Don't you know the world is heavy? But God is carrying it. What is, what, what, what is it that you want God to do? What do you want him to do? Despite what others may say, despite what our eyes see, we need to trust God to be God. What do you trust God to do? Are you confident that God is able to do it? Are you? Will you trust him? Will you trust the fact that God is God? Will you trust him to do what he is able to do? Will you trust him to do what he will do? Will you let God be God? Will you move forward in faith this evening? You see, God wants all of us to move forward in faith. You know, Jesus says we should come as we are, but he didn't say we should go as we are. We are not meant to go as we are. I pray a prayer every, every day and I say to God, I say, God, everybody I meet, I want them to be better off. Let them be better off than when I first met them. And that's what God intends for us. That's what Jesus said. You come to me and when he finishes with you, you will be a different person. God wants all of us to grow in trust. God wants all of us to have fruitfulness in our lives. He wants all of us to be in a place where we are willing to allow him to fully work in us and through us. And I strongly believe that that's where God wants us to be. And I trust him that he is willing and he is able to do it. Why? Because we are people of promise. We are people of promise. We are people of the promise of Jesus in our lives. His grace and favor working in us and through us, touching others and enabling us to make a difference in the world in which we live. Beloved, God wants us to trust that he can work and will work in our lives. God wants you to trust that he can work in the lives of your family. Your family members. You see, a lot of the time, you think you're doing something. All you're doing is submitting yourself to him. He is the one doing the work. It's not you. That's why you have to trust God to be God. Trust him to do his work. To do what he does. God wants you to trust that even in your circumstance, in your situation, he is working his purposes for his glory. We've studied the the life of, or we're studying the life of Joseph and seeing how God worked mightily in him and through him and how a whole, a whole generation was affected by him, how an entire world was affected by Joseph, not just his family, not just Joseph. Whatever we face, we need to trust God. Whether, I don't know how you're going to look at it, but there is method to all that God is doing in your life. Everything that is happening in your life is happening for a reason and God knows why. 
There is no problem, there's no circumstance, no situation, no issue that God cannot deal with. Nothing, nothing catches God unawares. Nothing can surprise him. There is nothing that can defeat God. Nothing. So you must trust him. You must trust God. You mustn't allow your circumstances to keep you from moving forward in faith. Don't allow your situation, whatever it is that you are going through, to stop you from trusting God. Maybe you're thinking this evening, well, I know God's word says, trust him. But SL, you don't know my circumstances. You don't know what I've gone through. I know what the Bible says I should believe about God when it comes to healing, but. I know what the Bible says about God when it comes to providing, but. I know what the Bible says about prayer, but. I know what the Bible says, but. But you don't know my situation, SL. SL, you have no idea what it's like. SL, if you were in my shoes, you would say things differently. SL, if you know what I've been going through, you wouldn't be saying all these things you are saying this evening. <laughs> Beloved, let me tell you. The promise of God is there for you in that situation, in those circumstances. In that total and complete mess that you are seeing. Will you trust the promise that God has for you? Will you trust God? The Bible tells us, trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding. In all your ways, submit to him and he will make your path straight. Don't allow the circumstance to take your eyes off the promise of God. That is what that, that scripture is telling us. Focus on what God is telling you. Stop listening to the wind. Don't dismiss the promise of God. Remember what happened. The people saw early hours of the morning. They saw a figure. The disciples walking on the water. Of course they would have been scared. Is that a ghost? Is that a spirit? They've always told us. They've always told us about on the sea. There are mermaids and all kinds of things. They say, ah, we have seen this mermaid. And then they saw it was their master. Jesus. Rabboni. And of course, trust. Forward, Peter. Bid me come to you. He said, Peter, come. And Peter got up and started walking. And then he started looking around, asking himself, is it possible that I should be walking on water? How? 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 He took his eyes off the promise of Jesus and began to sink. You know, let me, let me make you laugh. Let me make you laugh. Please, what was Peter's occupation? What was Peter's occupation? Just, I couldn't, you know, when I look at the story, I just wonder, what was Peter's occupation? Peter was a fisherman. I don't think he was a banker, or a carpenter, or a bricklayer, or a doctor, or a gospel singer. Peter was a fisherman. Do you really believe that you have a fisherman that doesn't know how to swim? Do you really believe that you can have a fisherman that cannot swim? Peter would never have drowned. But he took his eye off the promise. Fear came in and he didn't know what he was doing again. That is what fear does. It takes your eye off the promise and you become confused. And then you have all kinds of thoughts coming into your head. 
That's why God says, just keep looking at me. Focus on me. Focus on your own focus. Whatever your circumstance is, God is the answer. There is a promise, yes, and there is also a circumstance. And there is a God. And because God is, you can trust him. Why do you trust him? Because he is with you. The Bible says you are an overcomer. The Bible says you are victorious. The Bible says you are a conqueror. Why does the Bible say these things about you? Because they are true. They are speaking the truth of God. You take the promise of God and you see those promises begin to work in your circumstances. Seek God in the circumstance and you will find him and he will be your source of strength. It's not by your power, it's not by your might. The Bible will not call you an overcomer, in fact, more than overcomers, if there was nothing to overcome. Do you get it? For them to call you, for the word of God to refer to you as an overcomer, it means that there is a trouble that you need to overcome. There's something that you need to get over. The Bible will not call you victorious if there were not things to get victory over. The Bible will not call you a conqueror if there are not things to defeat. So why do you imagine that your life will be without challenges? Why? Let me tell you, our circumstances are real and our God is real. Trust him. God is with you. God is there. God will strengthen you. Whatever it is, whatever it is that is causing this fear or anxiety in your life and you feel like you are out of control, start to see that thing differently because God is with you. Every single one of the promises of God is yes and amen. In Jesus Christ is yes and yes that's what he's saying well however you look at it yes 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 with him the answer is always positive and if you are in Jesus Christ by in him I mean that if you have put your faith in him in who he is in what he has done on your behalf you have full access to the promises of God so you must trust him God is for us and together we can overcome. God is for you and you will have victory. God is for you and you can conquer whatever it is that is, you know, that is standing in your face and telling you I'm here to deal with you. You can conquer that thing today. God is with you in your circumstances. You must trust him. You know the promises of God are yes and amen in Christ Jesus for you. So in closing, I'm going to ask you the question one final time. What do you need to trust God to do? Reach out to God right now and let him give you the strength. You see, I'm not saying this. I'm not, I'm not sharing this message for you to feel good and for you to feel happy. For, no, this is, this is reality. This is reality. I'm sharing my reality with you. Reach out now and let God give you strength. Practice what you have heard this evening. And that's the same way Jesus Christ said. He said, only if you can believe. Trust in the Lord with all your heart. Lean not on your own understanding. In all your ways, submit to him. And he will make your path straight. Amen. Let us pray. Beloved, this evening we're just going to read together a psalm and it's a prayer of trust in God. Please turn your Bibles to Psalm 31 and let us all read together before we close. Please let me know when you are there.
Are we there now? Psalm 31. I come to you, Lord, for protection. Never let me be defeated. You are a righteous God. Save me, I pray. Hear me, save me now. Be my refuge to protect me, my defense to save me. You are my refuge and defense. Guide me and lead me as you have promised. Keep me safe from the trap that has been set for me. Shelter me from danger. I place myself in your care. You will save me, Lord. You are a faithful God. You hate those who worship false gods, but I trust in you. I will be glad and rejoice because of your constant love. You see my suffering. You know my trouble. You have not let my enemies capture me. You have given me freedom to go where I wish. Be merciful to me, Lord, for I am in trouble. My eyes are tired from so much crying. I am completely worn out. I am exhausted by sorrow and weeping has shortened my life. I am weak from all my troubles. Even my bones are wasting away. All my enemies and especially my neighbors treat me with contempt. Those who know me are afraid of me. When they see me in the street, they run away. Everyone has forgotten me as though I were dead. I am like something thrown away. I hear my enemies whispering, terror is all around me. They are making plans against me, plotting to kill me. But my trust is in you, O Lord. You are my God. I am always in your care. Save me from my enemies, from those who persecute me. Look on your servant with kindness. Save me in your constant love. I call to you, Lord. Don't let me be disgraced. May the wicked be disgraced. May they go silently down to the world of the dead. Silence those liars, all the proud and arrogant who speak with contempt about the righteous. How wonderful are the good things you keep for those who honor you. Everyone knows how good you are, how securely you protect those who trust you. You hide them in the safety of your presence from the plots of others. In a safe shelter, you hide them from the insults of their enemies. Praise the Lord, how wonderfully he has shown his love for me when I was surrounded and attacked. I was afraid and thought he had driven me out of his presence, but he heard my cry when I called to him faithful and punishes the proud as they deserve. Be strong, be courageous, all you that hope in the Lord. Amen. Our Father and our God, there is so much ahead of us that we cannot foresee. There is so much we wish we could control, but we cannot. Father, we hold all the unknowns, the questions, the desires, and the longings out to you. We want to trust you, but we acknowledge that we need help with that sometimes. Father, help us to trust you with this year, 2021. Our Lord and our God, we are getting to the end of the first quarter. Father, we thank you that we can be anchored in faith when we are tethered to you. Father, help us trust you. For we pray in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Our Father and our God, we thank you for the opportunity you've given us at this hour of the day that you have spoken to us through your word, which is life and spirit to us. Father, we depend on your word to live. And we thank you, Lord, that you are faithful to give it to us. Father, we are praying that your word will help us grow and your help word will help us keep doing your will in this life. Help us to understand it well so that we can always keep walking in thy ways. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. God bless each and every one of you. I would like you, if you can, to meditate on that psalm. Psalm 31 is such a beautiful psalm and one that gives us great encouragement. Trust God. Trust God. This is the season. He's telling us to trust him. 
Um, we look forward to as many of you who are going to participate in our Bible study session tonight at 10 p.m. West Africa time. We are still on our um, the Gospel of Mark. And I look forward to as many of you who join us in our 5 a.m. declarations tomorrow morning. God bless you. I love you with the love of the Lord. Stay lifted.